All right, guys, let's talk about one of my favorite protocols in networking. It's called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So what is DHCP? Also known as DHCP, of course. So what is this protocol? What is the purpose of it? Why do we have it? And maybe understand the purpose of it and in, 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 in actually you guys use it all the time. That's the funny thing. So let's get over this. So Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is a protocol basically used to automatically assign IP addresses to basically devices on a network, right? So let's say you have, this is the easiest example, your home network, right? Let's say you go home, you go to someone's house, you say, hey, bro, like, what's your Wi-Fi password, right? So you end up asking them what's their Wi-Fi password, and basically you log into their phone, you go in there, you put in your password, and then keep in mind, once you log in, you guys never actually put in an IP address on your phone, right? Have you guys noticed that? You didn't put an IP address because your phone automatically got an IP address from that router. Isn't that pretty cool? Um, back then, when this protocol did not exist, people had to manually configure devices with an IP address for it to properly connect, right? And obviously, it's people still do it manually for certain reasons, but um, for like convenience reasons, especially in a home network, dynamic like DHCP is just awesome. It basically automatically will give your device an IP address, right? As soon as it connects to a network, right? That way, you don't have to worry about adding a manual IP, finding what the subnet of the IP is of that router um, of those private IPs, and just connecting it. You never have to do that. So that's one of the cool things. What I'll do now is I'll go into the um, screen. And I'll kind of draw out and sort of explain it to you and show you how it works, the purpose of it, and we'll get us right into it. All right, how's it going, guys? So today, I just want to quickly go over how does DHCP work and sort of explain it to you guys in a very simple manner um, because this is one of my favorite protocols. And yeah, let's just get into this. So DHCP, so we have right here DHCP. Um, the key point with DHCP is that it is part of the Layer 3 of the OSI model, right? So of the OSI model, key point, right? Why? Because it primarily involves IP addressing. If you guys know, the network layer the, of the OSI model involves really IP addressing, right? So what is DHCP? What is the process of DHCP? Um, and then let me just explain to you guys in a very simple manner. So you have a router here, and in this router you have, let's just say it's connected via ethernet to a PC, right? This is a PC. It's connected via an Ethernet cable. Um, and then also the router is also connecting via Wi-Fi as well to, let's just say, I don't know, a phone, um, a tablet. If my drawing could get any better, a tablet. Um, what else? Let's just say games. Uh, that's, I guess, my best drawing of a gaming controller, I guess. Um, but yeah, games. Um, what else we got here? We have your smart TV as well. You know, you have your TV. Can't forget about that. And what else we have? You have your smart blender or something. I don't know. <laughs> your smart blender, right? That's also connected. So you have all these devices, right? You have all these devices connected to the router, in each one of these devices, if we did not have dynamic host configuration protocol, each one of these devices would require us to essentially have to statically configure an IP address on each one of these devices here. So each one of those devices, this would need an IP, this would need IP, this one we need to statically add an IP to the device, right? And imagine if you guys are coming home from work or coming home from school, and as soon as you go to your home router or you go home connecting to your network, you have to manually configure an IP address. Imagine how much of a headache that would be. Now, imagine if you have to do this in an office environment or a hospital, right, where you have to tell the customers, yeah, I can configure an IP based off what's available, or you have to manually configure IPs of thousands of customers. Way too much work. We need to automate this process, and DHCP is what's going to do that for us. And the way it does it is, first of all, you have to state a pool, right? A DHCP pool. And what is a pool, right? The pool essentially is a range, right, of IPs, right? And these IPs could be in any sort of range. So in this case, we'll do the 192.168.10. We can just say any range from, from 1 all the way to 100, 
right? So you have this range right here. This is the range that you pretty much give it. And within this range, you can essentially assign the device in this router will automatically assign any one of these devices here um, an IP within this range, right? And uh, the only thing is you just have to enable DHCP on the device, which most of the time they should be enabled. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's a very simple process, right? But it saves so much time. And, and the way it works, it uses um, really a four-step process. This four-step process is known as DORA, which um, it's an acronym for DISCOVER for the D, um, offer um, for the O, and then R is request, and then I think A is acknowledge. So really it's the whole process. So you have your router here essentially. The router, you have your end device here. The first step is it just sends, the router sends, for step one, sends a discover message, right? Um, and this discover message is just, it's a broadcast message, so it sends it out to every device on the network, right? And it's really what it's doing is it's looking for the, um, what they call the DHCP server or the, the device that's going to be assigning the DHCP um, IPs, right? So it's looking for that device, right? So it's doing a discover. And then essentially what happens after that is the router will say, oh, yeah, we haven't. We we can we can we can offer you an IP, okay, and then coming back, we have the request, right? And then once it once the PC requests the IP, then it's going to acknowledge it. I acknowledge it, right? And then that whole once that whole process is done, this four step process, then they can essentially assign that IP, right? And that's really the whole process. It's a very simple process, right? And then what's gonna happen is this router is going to assign, like, hey, I have the one, the IP 192.168.10.3. So it's gonna assign this IP to this PC right here, right? Once that, once it does that, boom, this, this, I, this uh, PC has this IP, right? And it has this IP, and it's done, boom, easy, you're connected, you're ready to go to internet, you're ready to stream, super easy, right? Um, and this whole process happens seamlessly, it happens within milliseconds, as soon as you go to your house, it's done, right? But it happens behind the scenes, but this is a very consequential protocol because it saves so much time and effort and headache, and it's convenience, pretty, pretty much protocol, but it also saves the fact of someone potentially having to statically configure an IP, right? which is also in headache. So that's the process of DHCP. Now what we'll do is we're gonna go into Packet Tracer and then go ahead and configure it. All right guys, so we are in Packet Tracer right now. Um, so what we'll do is we're, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some devices. I'll grab a router, I'll grab a switch, and I will grab some PCs. So I'll grab maybe three of them. So let's go and grab these. So you just grab the end devices. Now I'm gonna go ahead and connect all of these end devices and get them started. So we have this one, this one, this one, whoops, and last one. All right, so now the first step is we're gonna to have to bring up the port that's going downstream. Uh, to the switch um, and also add an IP address to it. So that's the first step. So once you go into the router, you want to go here. Um, so just get no for the dialog. And then from here, we'll just go into configure mode. And then we'll go into interface, gigabit. And I believe this is gigabit 000. So this is the downstream port right here. So it'll be 000. That's the name of the port right here. And on this port, I'm just going to do a no shot you can see that port comes up, right? Next step is I'm going to go ahead and add an IP address on this. So I'll do IP address 192.168.10. We'll just pick this IP um, and we'll give it a slash 24 IP address. And the slash 24 is a 255.255.255.0. Um, so that's the IP we're gonna give it, right? And then we're gonna click enter. So now we've configured an IP and we've also brought up the port. So that's the first step, right? You have to make sure connection to layer three is up. So once that's there, next step is you wanna exit out of here, um, go back into configure mode. And once you're in configure mode, we want to essentially, the first step is you want to create 
um, a DHCP pool, a DHCP pool, and you also want to exclude DHCP addresses as well. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go IP DHCP um, pool, um, and we'll name the pool. So we're just gonna call this a pool. In this pool, we'll just call it local area network, right? LAN or whatever. So I just called it LAN. So basically, we're just naming the pool. That's all we're doing. Um, next step is we're going to exclude addresses um, to be given out to devices. So for a variety of reasons, you can exclude addresses. Maybe you have devices that you just want to statically configure IPs, maybe like a printer or a server or whatever. Um, you would do that st um, statically, and you don't want to have DHCP assign those devices IP addresses for whatever reason. That's totally fine. You would do that. So what you would do here is you want to go into um, essentially um, IP DHCP. Um, oops, you want to go exit out of here. So IP DHCP excluded addresses. You do 192.168.10.1. We're going to pick one because that's that downstream IP. We don't, we don't want to assign that IP, right, because it's being used um, to the, we'll give it a range of like, we'll say 20 IP. So we'll do 192.168.10.20. So I want to show you guys this config that I just added. I did IP DHCP excluded address 192.168.10.1 to 192.168.20.1. So I'm excluding this IP addresses from being used from the DHCP pool, right? And I haven't assigned the pool yet, but I'm excluding it just that before I can assign it because I don't want to assign the, the network of, of the pool and then have it give it away. So you always want to exclude it before you add it, right? So that's first step. So I'm excluding it. Now, essentially what you're doing here is you're going to go and add the network. So um, to do that, you should do network. Um, you actually want to go IP DHCP pool, um, local area network. So now we're in the pool. Um, and from here, what we're going to do is we're going to do network. 192.168. And before I do network, I just want to show you, if I do a question mark from here, you can see what I'm supposed to put. So saying network number and dotted decimal notation. So I'm just going to put the network of the IPs that I want to assign DHCP. So I'll do 192.168.10. We'll do, we'll start at 21. And then now if I do a question mark here, it's saying the network mask. Right, so essentially with this network mask, you're gonna add another network to this to um, essentially show like the range of the network, right? Um, the subnet mask of the network, right? So in this case, it's just gonna be um, 255.255.255.0. So now we've given it a net network um, and we've also given it, an ex we've also excluded these IPs as well. Um, right now the next step is we just, going to do a default router as well. The default router is essentially saying what is the IP of the router of that's going downstream to this network essentially. So in this case, we'll just do 192.168.10.1. So that's a default router. Now at this point, pretty much DHCP is essentially configured. And keep in mind, we're doing DHCP um, as the router. Ba basically, the router is the one giving us DHCP. Right, and it's two completely different from essentially having the um, essentially having a server do it. Because when it comes to DHCP, you can either create a DHCP server that can do this, which is a service within a server, or you can just have a router do it. In this case, we're using a router example, right? So once we have that there, um, the next step, really, what we do now is we're going to go and go into the end devices. So if we go into these end devices. Um, and if we just go into like desktop, we go to IP configuration. As you can see here, there's static and then there's DHCP. So currently on the devices, it's static, right? And I, I can add an IP right now, um, but we don't want to do that because who has time for static IPs when you can just do DHCP? And at this point, it's requesting IPs. And as you can see, it says DHCP requests successful. And then also you can see here, it's giving me an IP and keeping and pay attention to the range. It says 192.168.10.21. Why is it not starting with 10.1? Even though this IP gives us this range, right? Why does it not do that? Because we've done this command here, this excluded address command, right? So we're excluding all these addresses, right? So these addresses can be statically configured anywhere, right? Um, they, they still can, but in this case, we're not going to do that. 
Um, but you can see we we've it's given us an IP and it's already determined the default gateway. It's done the di it's done the DHCP thing altogether. And I believe if we use a simulation mode in Packet Tracer, we can see this happen in real time. So if I go into the PC four, which is still using static IPs, as you can see, let's just turn on DHCP and then watch what happens to the network. So um, as you can see here, it already has a packet and we can find out what type of packet that is. Um, so you can see it's a DHCP packet, um, right? So it's a DHCP packet, let me move stuff there. So we have a DHCP packet being sent out, right? And within this DHCP packet, essentially what's going on is we can essentially now see the message that's being sent. So right now it's sending that discover message. Right, sending that discover message. Keep in mind that discover message is a broadcast message. That's why it's sending out to everyone in the network. Now it's um, doing ARP real quick and all that stuff. So now it's basically giving it IP. So if we go back to real time, um, we open up this. Oh, what's right here? So you open this up. You can see that it's already given it an IP, right? And same with this one. Um, we just go here, we turn on DHCP, and it should give us uh, 23. So it, it basically increases the IP um, every time. And just to ver verify that, we can also go into the command prompt. If we do IP config um, slash all, we can verify that we have that IP on there um, right here. So you can see the IPv4 address was given. I'm um, going to give us a subnet mask right there. So that's one of the cool things with DHCP is that you can manually configure it. Isn't that like a me? Or sorry, I keep getting confused. You can statically configure, or you can um, dynamically have the um, the relationship between the router and the um, PC essentially assign themselves an IP address without you having to ever do that. Right. The only thing you have to do is just make sure the device is enabled with DHCP. You also have to give it a pool, um, give it the name of the excluded addresses if you want to exclude addresses. And you just have to give the network of the IP. Essentially, you do that, and it's smooth sailing. So that's the process of DHCP, a really cool protocol. Um, you guys use it all the time. Maybe you guys don't realize it, but it's awesome. So yeah, if you guys like this video, um, hopefully you know this has been informative for you guys. If you guys want to see more videos like this, please um, feel free to let me know. Leave some comments, suggestions in the comment section. Um, and also feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. So I really do appreciate everyone who's been watching these videos. I'm going to continue to make more technical videos like these if you guys want to see more. Um, with that being said, everyone, I really do appreciate you guys' time. Um, and yeah, with that being said, everyone, I really hope you guys have a really good day. And peace.